This is gameplay from Phil Eumas, and I'm going to go through four detailed reasons why I think he is one of the best tank players in the world. Let's start off with the first reason I'm going to detail over, and that is his pathing to defend and control this bottom lane. Now, for all successful laning phases to work in the later game, you've got to be successful early. And in doing this, what Phil has done is pick Trevenant, which is a Pokemon that can do really well at defending the lane and securing farmer level 5. And it's got amazing CC for the mage counterpart in this lane. Phil's also using a Pokemon with mobility that can do double stacking. And when this Pokemon gets those Aos cookie stacks in and the attack weight stacks in, it is extremely powerful. I have my passive for bees here. Let's get ready. I'm going to just burst the bees, all right? Get ready, get ready. And just listen to how he talks in that laning phase. He lets his partner know, yeah, we're just going to burst the bees straight away, right? That just means we're going to attack them straight away. And then to get off on the right foot here, what Phil is doing is making sure he is frontlining at this first objective. He's isolating the Pokemon that can do a lot of damage to this farm and then looking to get that secure. Luckily he gets it with a basic, but you can see how deadly it is when his team is able to follow up. Phil is frontlining for his team. He's the tank. He's initiating those fights and he's engaging when he's at a good, healthy spot to do so. Now, at this particular stage, he's actually decided to break the goal. I think that might have been a mistake from his team. And you can see by his reaction there, I think he was hoping to get his last stack in as a big overcap so he could break that bottom goal. Now, I know there's a lot of players who are going to be sitting there going, uh, Mr. Unite Climbing, you have not taught me anything new. At this stage, I fully understand everything you have said. Now, this is where it might get a little tricky, is at this 5 minute 50 section here. Firstly, you have got the 550 bees, and if you have broken at the appropriate time, these bees will spawn near your first tier goal zone. Now, at this particular point, you have got some priorities. Your priority number one is to make sure you're securing farm and not letting the enemy score in your bottom first tier. The rest of your team will naturally rotate from bottom lane up to top lane. The enemy team is going to be looking to get any sort of advantage. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to show you why Phil has pushed as deep as he is at the moment. Now it's all got to do with the positioning and the vision of the enemies on the map. Remember your top priority is to not let the enemy score in your bottom tier as the Trevenant and that's exactly what Phil is doing here. The only way for the enemies to get through is if they go through their jungle to get a back cap so they want to sneak through the middle of the uh, the middle of the map and then go down into the goal zone or they can go along the lane. Now Phil is making sure he's maintaining vision on the Pokemon that could potentially be going through that jungle but also be going down along through the lane. In doing so, Phil's able to pressure the enemy farm but make sure that the enemy are not going to be able to get that back tap. The last thing you want is the enemy to be pushing for a 50 and you're just securing a bow toy that's worth like a very little amount of experience. So that's thing number one that Phil does incredibly well which is use his pathing to defend a bottom lane really well, but he also does fantastic in his early laning phase. That's one of the four reasons why I think Phil is incredible. The second reason, and honestly, this is my favorite reason why I really like Phil as just a person, as a YouTuber, but even most respectively as a player, is his communication on the microphone and his positivity and his just general vibe while doing so. Let me pause and reflect on a whole bunch of scenarios that Phil does this for, right? He will talk to his team really well. He understands the power of his communication and manages to say what he needs to say in such few words, but in such a respectful and positive manner. That is highly commendable. And I think it's his number one reason why he's such a phenomenal tank player. I can't go mid. Okay, I'm gonna go score then. Yeah, they're, they're, they're playing for mid, just give mid. I have my passive for bees here, let's get ready. I'm gonna just burst the bees, all right? Get ready, get ready. All right, I'm XP DM, XP. I got seven, it's okay, you. I got, I got uh, Delphox on point, Delphox on one, nice. It's on one, it's on one, it's on one. All right, I got y'all, okay? Y'all, welcome to the carry. I have two bottom. I have bro buzz all bottom, you guys are 4v3 top. I got bro bottom, you guys are 4v4 top, good luck. On me, on me, on me, I'm working I'm scoring bottom, watch out, it's 5v4 top, it's 5v4 top. Back up, back up, back up. Go boost me, though. What do you guys wanna do? Set up, set up, set up, set up, set up. Yeah, come, come here, come here. Set up, don't build bad practices. Let's go. So with projectiles like yours, you can shoot and then I'll just sync mine up with you. You know? 
if you have it. So as you can see, his communication and his positivity build success for his other teammates as they know what's going on around the map. The third thing that I think Phil does incredibly well as a tank player is he uses his skills to avoid some heavy CC so he doesn't get caught out in a bad position. Maybe this is just a good practice for every player, but Phil demonstrates this perfectly in the tank role because he understands if he gets picked out and killed, his team is in a very bad position. So he will use a skill to avoid heavy CC. The most important part of this tank role is being alive at those big fights and not getting picked off first. If you get picked off first, your team doesn't have a tank and their team's able to just steam roll through you. Phil understands that and he plays this role perfectly. The last thing I wanna talk over with Phil is his Rayquaza fight positioning, his Rayquaza fight approach. As you can see here, he uses that skill to avoid that heavy CC so he doesn't get picked off and he's just looking to poke the bush and engage the enemy. He's putting himself in a position where enemies in the bottom L bush are gonna to have to poke him before anything happens. He's keeping his team safe from multiple angles. And then when the follow up happens, he's there, he's got his Unite move, at least in this game, with the Slowbro. So what he's gonna be able to do is he's gonna be able to make sure something dies or nothing is gonna be able to secure the Rayquaza. At this point, he's still got the Unite move and he knows that this Clefable might have a chance to secure. So he pulls that Unite move where his team's able to rip and secure that objective to win the game. That's one thing that Phil does incredibly well. He's really, really good at it, which is this Rayquaza fight. Let's have a look at the second game. So in the second game, Phil is using Trevenant. You can see his positioning is quite aggressive. He can see that there's all five in their jungle, so he follows up with his other tank, and they're able to just wipe the team because the enemy is clumped. You don't have to engage this fight in the Rayquaza pit. If you've got vision and you've clumped and CC the enemy, well, it was stopping you from absolutely delivering the damage in their jungle. If you're this far ahead, this is absolutely what you can do to win games. And Phil does this excellently. He follows up, he body blocks for his team, he provides that crowd control, and his team follows up and does immense damage. Now, as a final, I just want to talk over the laning phase. This isn't one of the reasons why I think Phil is one of the best defenders in the game, but as you can see, Phil prioritizes getting the farm, just like all the other top players do. You can see that he uses his skills in tandem with his laning partner. This is because they're on communication together, but that's what Phil wants to do. He's also got that experience share, which means that if he secures the farm and his teammate gets it and they're in the same vicinity, he's funneling all of that experience over to his teammate. And notice that he is where the farm is spawning. He's in position early. He understands the timing of the farm, which is absolutely essential. And honestly, a lot of good players will already be doing this. So notice where the priorities are. The priorities are in getting the farm. And if the enemy decides to overcommit, then Phil can follow up and do some damage, do some CC and get the kill. As you can see, always in position nice and early at those bees to try and get as many of them as much of that, is, that experience as possible. You can see here, him and his teammate are poking the bush, they're attacking that bush, and that's so they can try and get positioning to secure this little farm here, right? They'll do it frequently. If you, if you watch nice and closely, right? They take their farm and then they look to pressure the enemy farm, right? In doing so, they're just hoping to poke the enemy into the, into the, into the worst position, right? They wanna be in standing in the spot in the lane that makes them get the farm secure, right? Not the enemy. Okay, as you can see, it's approaching that eight minutes. The teammate of Phil runs into the middle of the map and Phil is communicating. You can see his mouth moving though. I've got it on mute. It's always communication. Hey, the Trevenant is still in the bottom lane. Okay, you've got a 2v2 in the middle, whatever he's saying. All right, so you can see all of those top priorities that Phil has got are coming into play. He knows the enemy's coming down, he CCs them before they're able to get to that goal zone, and then bam, gets the big kill. When he compromises the positioning of the enemy, he's able to get those kills and follow up to get the score, because the Trevenant's probably not gonna be able to stop both of them, right? Full health, has the experience, and again, just putting himself in the best possible position to secure this farm, 
but also be at a spot where he's safe from the enemies to get away so he's not going to get picked off and he's not going to die. Playing this early game absolutely perfectly sets you up to be able to path that the path and defend the bottom lane throughout the game. It puts you in the position to communicate positively and maintain the advantage over the enemy. It puts you in the position to be able to force the enemies to engage so you can use your skills to avoid that heavy CC. And it puts you in the position to be at the spot you want to be at the Rayquaza fight. All of these four reasons why Phil is such a great defender stem from the fact that he's doing really well in his early lane. None of this would be working the way it is if the bottom lane was broken at 8 minutes 25, right? If a Mewtwo came down and absolutely destroyed his lane. I can guarantee you, Phil would not be losing the lane to a Mewtwo. He would understand where he's meant to be positioned because he understands the priority is farm and not dying. If you're dead, you don't get any farm. If you found this video useful, please consider giving it a like and also click on one of these other videos where I'm analyzing the pro game play and making you a little bit better at the game by understanding the mindset and understanding the gameplay of these top pro players.